An update now on a case we have been following here on Happening Now for a very long time. Jury deliberation could start as early as today for Zachary Adams. He is on trial for the murder of nursing student Holly Bobo. On April 13, 2011, 20-year-old Holly Bobo was kidnapped from her home in Darden, Tennessee. Zachary Adams was formally accused with kidnapping and killing Bobo in 2014. Then three and a half years after her disappearance, Holly Bobo's remains were found not far from her home. Now the Zachary Adams trial began last week, but he is only the first of three suspects to go on trial here. Uh, he actually could face the death penalty if he is convicted. Joining us now, Brian Claypool, uh, criminal defense attorney, and Emily Campagno, former federal and criminal defense attorney. Thank you both. Thank you, Julie. You know, Emily, there is a ton of public pressure to get a conviction in this case. It's been going on since her disappearance in 2011. With that said, the question is, is there enough evidence to support a conviction? You said it perfectly. You know, this is the most expensive and exhaustive investigation in that state's history. So there's a ton of public pressure to convict, but there's simply a mountain of evidence that doesn't add up. And especially with the death penalty at stake, a unanimous verdict might be a long shot here. Now in courtroom testimony is really powerful for juries. And here they saw the former lead investigator of this case coming to them and saying, look, this defendant didn't do it. I thought this other guy did it. And by the way, he confessed to me and he's a convicted sex offender. Now that coupled with technical expert testimony that the cell phones of the defendant and the victim were not in the same place for the crucial hour of her death, right. that's going to be potentially enough to cast that doubt on that jury. Yeah, any doubt whatsoever is going to end in a hung jury. Brian, she, Emily just raised the point about the lead investigator, and this is really damning. I mean, he basically uh, testified that the cell phones between Bobo and Adams were not together in the minutes after her kidnapping. And so if their cell phones were at two separate locations, that's almost like an alibi for Adams. Yeah. Um, how does that testimony then really make uh, the prosecution's job that much harder? Well, Julie, the jurors in this case uh, have three lenses through which to evaluate the evidence. And depending on what channel they choose when they deliberate will determine whether this is an acquittal or a guilty. My prediction is going to be it's either going to be a hung jury or an acquittal. And here's why. You just raised a good point. Uh, the, the, the first, let's talk about the first lens though. The first lens is what, what Emily talked about. That's witness testimony, live testimony. And the, and the only live testimony you have in this case that supports the prosecution is a guy named Jason Autry. He's also uh, being prosecuted for felony murder. So he's now dumping this at the doorstep of Zach Adams. From the defense lawyer on that one, I'm arguing, well, he's just doing that so he doesn't go to the, he doesn't go to the gas chamber. So he has an incentive to do that. The only other live testimony I think that helps the prosecution is a guy named Dylan, I think his name was Dylan Jacobs. He was, he, can, he was prosecuted for rape in this case. He, he, Julie, has an IQ of 10 years old. So then arguments going to be made by the defense that he could have been easily coerced. The second lens the jury's got to look at here is forensic and physical evidence. Unfortunately for the prosecution, there is none that connects Zach Adams to the murder. There's no fingerprints, yep. there's no hair fiber, there's no DNA evidence. The third lens Emily has talked a little bit about too, this gentleman named Terry Britt. He was also a suspect, Julie. Now you tell me, when is the last time you've seen in a first degree murder trial where a guy named Terry Dykus, who's the investigator, gets a, 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 a confession basically from Terry Britt, the other suspect, by the way, who's been convicted as being a sex offender and who lived near Holly Bobo. He then takes that alleged confession, right. gives it to the Tennessee Bureau of, in, in, of Investigation, right. and they do nothing with that. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Unfortunately, we just got so much going on here, but at least we were able to give this case the attention it deserves. Emily Campagno, Brian Claypool, thank you both. Thank you.